Good morning and welcome back to Sunday School. We're excited to be here today and we are going to be beginning as we always do with our opening blessing. Ready? Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. We're going to begin this morning with a story that has a little bit of something to do with the kingdom. It's called Extra Yarn, and it's going to be read for us today by our friend Francesca Della Vecchia Bregen. Francesca is a member of the Altar Guild. She's a retired member of the Vestry, and she is the aunt of Chiara Michelle and Sammy and Jimmy and Perhaps most importantly these days, she is Ned's mom. So without any further ado, we'll turn it over to Francesca. Good morning, I'm Francesca Bergen, and today we'll be reading The Extra Yarn by Mac Barnett, and it's illustrated by John Classen. On a cold afternoon in a cold little town where everywhere you looked was either the white of snow or the black of soot from chimneys, Annabelle found a box filled with yarn of every color. So she went home and knit herself a sweater. And when Annabelle was done, she had some extra yarn. So she knit a sweater for Mars too, but there was still extra yarn. And when Annabelle and Mars went for a walk, Nate pointed and laughed and said, you two look ridiculous. You're just jealous, said Annabelle. No, I'm not, said Nate. But it turned out he was. And even after she made a sweater for Nate and his dog and for herself and for Mars, she still had extra yarn. At school, Annabelle's classmates could not stop talking about her sweater. Quiet, shouted Mr. Norman. Quiet, everyone. Annabelle, that sweater of yours is a terrible distraction. I cannot teach with everyone turning around to look at you. Then I'll knit one for everyone, Annabelle said so they won't have to turn around. Impossible, said Mr. Norman. You can't. But it turned out she could, and she did, even for Mr. Norman. And when she was done, Annabelle still had yarn. So she knit sweaters for her mom and dad and for Mr. Pendleton and Mrs. Pendleton and for Dr. Palmer and for little Louie. She made sweaters for everyone except Mr. Crabtree who never wore sweaters or even long pants and who would stand in his shorts with snow up to his knees. No sweater for me, thanks, said Mr. Crabtree. So she made Mr. Crabtree a hat. And even then, Annabelle still had extra yarn. She made sweaters for all the dogs and all the cats and for other animals too. Soon, people thought, soon Annabelle will run out of yarn. But it turned out she didn't. So Annabelle made sweaters for things that didn't even wear sweaters. Things began to change in that town. News spread of this remarkable girl who never ran out of yarn. And people came to visit from around the world to see all the sweaters and to shake Annabelle's hand. One day, an archduke who was very fond of clothes sailed across the sea and demanded to see Annabelle. Little girl, said the Archduke, I would like to buy that miraculous box of yarn, and I am willing to offer you one million dollars. 
No thank you, said Annabelle, who was knitting a sweater for a pickup truck. The Archduke's mustache twitched. Two million, he said. Annabelle shook her head. No thanks. Ten million, shouted the Archduke. Take it or leave it. Leave it, said Annabelle. I won't sell the yarn. And she didn't. So that night, the Archduke hired three robbers to break into Annabelle's house, and they stole the box and took it to the Archduke, who set across the snow and sailed over the sea. Back to his castle, the Archduke put on his favorite song and sat in his best chair. Then he took out the box he lifted its lid. He looked inside. His mustache quivered. It shivered. It trembled. The Archduke hurled the box out the window and shouted, Little girl, I curse you with my family's curse. You will never be happy again. But... It turned out she was the end. Well, thank you, Franny. We enjoyed that story. Did you notice the way the colors in the book kept changing? Did you see that at first the colors seemed very gray and gloomy and sort of dark and forlorn? But then gradually, as Annabelle started knitting for people, the whole atmosphere was changed. It was transformed. And the mood started to change too. We saw bright, colorful pictures and I thought they made me feel kind of hopeful. Annabelle wrapped the whole world around her in a nice, warm, comfortable sweater. And she used the never-ending yarn to spread peace and love and to connect people with each other and with animals and even with the whole environment around her. And did you notice that she never cut the yarn? She let it continue from one person and one thing to another to connect everything around her. And what about the Archduke? Hmm. His curse totally backfired, didn't it? The world around him stayed just as dark as it was before because he was too selfish and greedy and dishonest to see the yarn. He couldn't recognize its true power, the power to knit people and things together. Annabelle had an amazing influence on her world because her intentions were pure. She was gentle, she was generous, she was giving and unselfish. She was persistent. That means she kept working, didn't she? She worked really hard. I think my hands would have been hurting if I did that much knitting. But she set her heart and her mind on making things better, not just for herself, but for everyone and everything around her. And in the end, she is very happy. She's blessed in that special happy kind of way you are when you're blessed. I wonder what you can do to make the world a better place. And now, Father Larry, I understand that you're going to talk to us about colors. I am. We're going to have a little bit of show and tell about the colors of the church year. 
I'm back. I know that you think I'm Father Larry, but I'm really Father Time because we're going to go through the year very quickly. As you can see up on the altar, we have what are called the verses, and these are uh, these are what goes on top of the chalice when the altar guild who sets up the altar uh, puts the chalice and the patent together. You see these on top of the chalice every week. Well, I'm here to talk about the colors of the church year. And I've got, the, for the first time in my life, I've got the entire year on all at once. You know, we decorate the church, and we decorate the altar. We also decorate the priest in the Episcopal church. So every season has a special color and we're gonna be looking at them. The season of Advent, that's the first season of the year, which begins on November 29th this year, is blue. And blue reminds us of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so we have blue for Advent. And I'm going to just put that along here. And then what comes after Advent? Right, Christmas. And Christmas is our one of our two huge festivals. And so what's a fitting color for a king? Well, gold and red. And so we use this, which is called, um, this is called a coronation tapestry, but the colors in it are gold and red, and there's all sorts of wonderful colors uh, in this. So we use this on the very special occasions. And of course, after the Christmas season, which goes for 12 days, we get to what's called Epiphany. It's a green season, a season when life is going on. It's a longer season. And so we have green because it's a time, it's called ordinary time. And it's just a regular time in the year. But then we have something called Ash Wednesday. And Ash Wednesday is the beginning of the, of the purple season, the season of Lent. Purple is a reminder to us of a couple of things. It's a reminder of how important Christ is because the only people that could wear purple were people who were like kings and very rich because purple was the most expensive color to make. But purple also reminds us of our sins. And so we wear purple uh, during Lent. I'm all out of railings, so I'm going to move across. And after Lent, well, at the end of Lent comes Passion Tide. You know when Palm Sunday is and Holy Week? And we wear red for that. Crimson. Do you know why? Right. It's for the, it reminds us of the blood that Jesus shed for us. And so we wear a dark red for that. And that's for Passion Tide. But then something wonderful happens. Jesus is risen from the dead. And what day is that? Right. It's Easter. And Easter is a day of purity and a day that we recognize uh, the, the greatness of God. And so we wear white, sometimes gold for that. That's a lot like um, white could also be used at Christmas time. So this is for our major important days when we celebrate the importance of Jesus. Then we have the day when the Holy Spirit is given and we have tongues of fire. And we remember that day by wearing red. And that's the red uh, that reminds us of the Holy Spirit. So we wear that for a while. And then comes the season after Pentecost and that's the one that we're in right now. And you've been seeing me wearing this stole most of the summer. And this is the one that matches our frontal. And it matches, see, it matches this green. Well, it's green because this is a time of growth and living. And uh, so it too is a green season. We have two green seasons in the year, Epiphany and what used to be called Trinity season or the season after Pentecost. So that brings us to one more stole, which I'll be wearing in two weeks time. And it's another white one. And the white is for the feast of Christ the King. 
That's when we realize just who Christ is and recognize him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So a white and gold is a very appropriate color for him because he is the most pure in heart of anyone who's ever lived. And so that is the church year in colors. And I hope that, uh, I hope that when you look at the colors in the church, you'll remember some of this and that you will know that we have a wonderful, colorful world and everything that we do in church has a special meaning. Thank you, Father Larry, for showing us all those beautiful colors. It was fun. I feel happy just seeing all those colors. But now you know what time it is. <laughs> no, what time is it? It's time to look at our Beatitudes ah, poster, of I'm course. Go, then I'll go into hiding. <laughs> and I'm going to stand up so I can show it to you a little easier. All right. So way up at the top, we see Jesus on the mountain. His hair is blowing and the people are coming up the mountain to hear him preach his sermon on the mount. And remember, there are eight Beatitudes, and they each have two parts, the blessing and the promise part. And today, we're going to talk about the sixth Beatitude. It's all the way down here. The poster's getting colored, but we're right down here, and here it is. It says, Blessed are the pure in heart. That's the first part. And here's the promise. For they will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. That's a lot of words. Sometimes it's hard to even say them all. But Father Larry, you can put it down for now. I'm going to sit down. Where is your heart? Can you find it, Father Larry? Where is your heart? Yeah, it's right oh, here. here. Everybody touch it. And, and I want you to feel with your fingers. Do you feel your heart beating inside you? I can feel mine. Mine is beating pretty fast right now. Do you know what job your heart does for your body? Well, it's your heart's job to pump blood all through your body, from your head to your toe, to your fingers, to your elbows, to your knees, everywhere. It pumps like this, and it makes the blood move all around. So it, your heart is very important. But when Jesus was talking about the heart, he meant the very center of who you are, the most important part of you, that is your heart, your center, your core. That is what your heart is. And Jesus tells us in this beatitude that he wants for us to have pure hearts, pure hearts, not mixed up hearts, but pure hearts. He wants to us to have hearts that are always centered on love. He wants us to be single-minded and single-hearted, to be focused on love in what we feel and what we say and what we do. Look at my glasses. Here they are. I'm going to take them off for a minute so you can see them. When I don't wear my glasses, I can't see very well at all. What, what I look at looks blurry and fuzzy, and I can't really tell very much about any details. I sort of squint, but nothing really looks very clear at all. But when I put my glasses on, the lenses, that's this glass part in here, help me to see things in a focused way, 
They help me to see things sharply and accurately, and I can see all the details much more clearly than I could without my glasses. I can focus well. All right, now I want you to try to put on your pretend glasses like this. Nice pretend glasses, okay? Jesus wants us to see the world and all the people in the world with lenses of love. We can't see the glasses on our faces, but we can know that they're there, the lenses of love. Because when we focus on love, when we concentrate on love and keep it always in our view and never, never give up on it, that's very important, never give up on it, when we're focused on love, then we will see God. Because guess what? God is love. And God will give us a new vision. He'll share his vision with us. And we'll be able to see how the world could be. And we will be blessed. We will be happy in the greatest way of all. And now, Guess what time it is? My favorite part. Art it, time? It's art time. Oh, yay. So we're going to go to the art studio right now, and I'll see you in just a second. Hi, welcome to Arts and Crafts with Mrs. Byrne, right here. And we've been talking about the sixth beatitude, the one that says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And this week, there's going to be a coloring page for you to do on the website. So don't forget to finish coloring this and add it to your Beatitude pages from the other weeks because we're starting to have a really pretty big book now. And I wanted to show you what we did last week. Remember when we did the crumpled art painting? And this is how mine turned out when it dried. I like the way it's all glittery and all the colors move together. It's kind of fun to look at it. Well, this week, we're going to do a different project. And this time, since we were talking about yarn in our story, Extra Yarn, we are going to do yarn art. So, I have a lot of different pieces of yarn and they're all different lengths and colors. And if you have yarn in your house, that's great. If you don't have yarn, you could also use string, or you could even use ribbon, anything you want. And it can be any thickness, and it can be any length. Okay, so here's my yarn. I'm gonna put it on the paper for a minute and show you the rest of the things we have. We are going to need some water and our watercolors with all the different colors. You can also use other kinds of paint, but watercolors make it pretty easy. So I'm gonna put them open here. And you're going to need some brushes. And you're going to need your Elmer's glue. And some kind of a little bowl to put the glue in. And I'll show you why. I'm going to pour my Elmer's glue into my little bowl, like that. Okay, and I'm gonna be ready for that in a minute. I'm going to put on my trusty glasses so that I can see everything in focus. It's much better when it's in focus. And now I get to play with my yarn. Now, you can do anything you want with the yarn. You might want to make a letter with the yarn. 
I'm making a letter S right now. That's the S for Susan for my first name. Or maybe I want to make a different letter. T's are always good. Here's T for Teddy. That's a good one. Or here's a really good one. I'm going to make D for Diana. I hope I'm not doing it upside down or backwards. There it is. D for, is it backwards? I can turn it around and make it go the other way too. That's better. There's a better D. But if I really wanted to get fancy, I could make a face with my yarn. I could make a circle with this pretty purple yarn. And I could use this kind of pink color for smile. Oops. And then I could use this green yarn to make eyes like this. And maybe he needs a funny nose. I can do a little ball like that. Or maybe he needs a mustache. You can do whatever you want with your yarn. But sometimes the most fun of all is just to make a design. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my really pretty long piece of purple. And I am, oh, this is a little messy, but you know, my hands like to get messy. So I'm going to put it right inside the glue. Get it pretty, co pretty covered with glue. Oh yes, it's a little messy. And then I've got to put it down on the paper just however I want. Just however I want to do it. It's all good. And now I'm going to choose another color. Now I have the pink. And of course I have to put it down into the glue. And it's pretty sticky. It's like sticky spaghetti. And now I'm going to put this one down wherever I would like. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and now I have my green, yellowy green. I'll put him down right here. I don't know why he's a him. There it is. And here's another one. Oops, <laughs> it does stick, but that's okay. I'm gonna put this one in the glue. And maybe I'll put it around here, wherever I want. It's already looking kind of beautiful. Here's another one. The light greeny yellow. Maybe I'll put it over here. And I'm getting close to finished. One more. You can do as much as you want and you can stop whenever you want. That's the good thing about this. It's going to be your way and that's going to be good. Okay. And remember, I can wash my hands and all the sticky stuff will be gone. One more. This one's sticking to my fingers. All right, where am I going to put him? Right in the middle. I can put them anywhere I want. Now, I think my picture is already looking pretty great, but I'm going to add something to it. I'm going to wash my sticky fingers off just a little with this towel. They're not going to be perfectly clean yet, but that's okay. And now I'm going to take my brush, put it in the water, and choose a color that I like. Hmm, feeling red right now. Put a lot of red on my brush. And I'm going to choose a place in my picture that I would like to make red. How about this whole space in here? And if you want to, you can let your yarn dry before you do the painting part. That might be a little easier. But for, for right now, I want to show you. So I'm being a little bit careful. I don't want to put my brush in the glue. I want to put it in the water. I don't think it would help my, my paint any to be in the glue. But you never know. You could try it and find out what happens if you put your brush right in the glue. All right, and I can always add a little bit more water. That makes it a little faster to paint. Okay, so I made that little area red. I'm going to wash my brush off, and now I think I'm going to try something different. What color do you think I should try? Purple? Who thinks purple? All right. 
I like purple. It reminds me of Diana's hair. Okay. There's purple. And I can always put more water in to make it go faster. And I need another color. What do you think? Should I try green? Who likes green? We'll try a little green. Oh, how about this little section right in here? This is sort of pretty. And maybe I'll put a little more green over in this part. And you can take your time when you do it. I'm going a little fast right now. Okay, what color is left? What should I do? Yellow? Yellow's nice. Yellow always makes me think of the sun and it brightens things up. Oops, I need a little more color. Oops, but see, I can put it back. No mistakes. Happy accidents. Someone I know would say, happy accidents. And I have room for one more color. So what did I, maybe some blue? You think some blue? Put blue right in the middle here. And then I have to let it dry. And I think we're going to have a pretty beautiful picture. So I wonder what you'll make when you try this. But now it's time for Miss Diana. She has a very beautiful photograph to share with us. I'll see you later in the church. Hey guys, wasn't that just such a fun craft? I don't know, playing with yarn seems like a really fun time. So guess who is not napping today? Sir Silver and Sir Gold. So let's see what they have to say. Hey Sir Silver, I need something funny. Do you have any jokes? Hello Miss Diana, what do you call a knight that you don't expect on the battlefield? I don't know. What do you call a knight that you wouldn't expect? Sir Gold, do you know? Sir Prize! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that makes sense. Well, now that we're in a funny mood, let's talk about love, which can be kind of silly and funny. So in this picture, we have two hands and they're making a heart together. You can tell they're two different hands because they have two different sleeves. And the heart is kind of making a heart. They're kind of making a heart. Can I go back to we have two hands? No, don't stop recording, okay. Just come back from the... <laughs> That was so funny. Now that we're in kind of a happy and silly mood, we're gonna talk about love because, you know, love can be kind of silly sometimes. Why not? So we have, in this picture, we have two hands and they're making a heart that's circling the sun. And you could tell that they're two different people. Well, at least I can, because they have two different sleeves. So it's two people and they're looking out and making a heart around the sun, which symbolizes the horizon. And I think what's cool about this picture is they're making a lens of love and it's looking out with love. So I want you to think of something you love doing. I'm gonna say, I love, hmm. I love writing stories. I really love writing stories. If I look at it from a lens of love, maybe in the future, I'll be a writer. Maybe you really love taking care of animals. If you look at that with your lens of love out into the future, maybe you'll become a veterinarian one day. Or maybe you really love math. I don't know, I don't really love math, but some people do. Maybe one day you'll be a mathematician that helps put spaceships on Mars. Anything is possible if you look at it with a lens of love. There's a little saying that kind of goes, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And I kind of think that might be what you can get from this picture. I don't know, you might take it another way, but I think of it that way. Because the sun represents the horizon which is the future, and the hands represent how you're seeing things, and it makes a lens, kind of like a camera. So I'm saying, look out with the lens of love. And now, we're gonna go, see, look, there we go, there's my lens of love. And now, we're gonna go back to the church with Mrs. Byrne and Father Larry, and see what they're up to. Thank you, Diana, for showing us 
that beautiful poster, and I'm looking through my heart. What do you see? Oh, my goodness. Well, we are going to watch a video now, and we're going to hear some people singing a song that's really a favorite of mine. It comes from the country of Ireland, and it's a very old song, and it's called Be Thou My Vision. And it's asking God to help to see things through eyes of love. different than the original? Yes, they were using modern instruments and they were singing together in a new way. 
I think God likes us to do things in new ways. You know, it says in the Bible somewhere, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. That's it. That's it. So we had a lot of fun this week. I know I did. Next week is going to be a little different. Next week, we're going to talk about a very special day that's coming up. Black Friday? Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, that's a much better day. So I hope you're with us then. And Father Larry, what did you want to tell everyone to look for? Right, we have some important email coming your way regarding the Christmas pageant. It's really not too early to start. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And meanwhile, make sure you're practicing the songs. Well, that'll be fun. I can hardly wait for Christmas myself. But I think now it's time for a blessing. It is. So with our eyes focused and the eyes of our heart focused on the wonderful colors that, w that are all around us, you see, I think that when we look at the colors in the world, we can see God through them. I think that's uh, a big part of the way that we can see God. He shows himself to us all the time. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. See you next week and stay safe. Bye-bye.